Welcome to Phylum Echinodermata. And I'm just going to pause right there. I have Patrick Starr on here, so you can probably get a guess as to which group of organisms this includes. But if we just pause and look at the word Echinodermata, we can actually kind of deduce what organisms are in here just based on the name of the phylum. So you might be more familiar with derm. Remember, derm is referring to an outer covering or a skin. And maybe you're not as familiar with echine or echino. Maybe you've heard of the animal echidna, um, which is a spiky animal. Echino refers to spikiness. Um, sometimes people will say bumpy, but it means spiky or spiny. So this is referring to organisms with spiny skin. Now you might not think of a sea star as having spiny skin, but if you actually look closely at it and feel it, it definitely does. But this also includes our sea urchins. So taking a look at the phylogenetic tree of our animals, so we are in the eumetazoa, so pretty much our true tissues. We are um, in bilateria, or the bilateral organisms, and you might be pausing and be like, well, sea stars aren't bilateral, but we'll touch on that soon. And now we're going into our deuterostomes. So in our deuterostomes, we have two groups of organisms, Echinodermata, which we'll talk about in this video. And then in the next video I have, we'll talk about Chordata, which is what we're found in. So let's go ahead and dive in to learn more about these guys. So as I mentioned in the previous slide, this includes things like sea stars, sea urchins like you see here, and sand dollars. You might be familiar with sand dollars because you, especially if you go to a beach house or, or somewhere that's coastal themed, there's probably those dried sand dollars. They're kind of white little circles. They usually have little um, designs in the middle of them. That's the skeleton um, of that echinoderm. <clears throat> they use the word skeleton kind of lightly, but yeah, it's just, it's a, it's a dead animal um, that's on someone's, uh, you know, mantle uh, or on their, on their kitchen table. So all of those organisms in their live form have this spiny skin. And in the bottom right corner here, that's an example of a sea urchin. Tons of different species out there. Um, and that's like definitely some spiny skin. So let's talk about this symmetry. Now in the phylogenetic tree, this group is combined with all other organisms in bilateral symmetry. But if you look at these, these guys are clearly radially symmetrical. And this is where this group gets kind of weird. So as larvae, so not the adult form, as larvae, they're bilateral. They kind of share those early embryonic stages with other organisms with bilateral symmetry. So as larvae, they're bilateral. <clears throat> and because they're sharing that with ancestors that are also bilateral, we just keep them organized with bilateral. However, very clearly, as you see in these two pictures of adult echinoderms, the adults have radial symmetry. So you could argue they have both. It just depends on which part of the life cycle we're talking about. As far as diplo or triploblast, this is going to be a triploblast. So they have those three germ layers. And the way those germ layers are arranged is as a U-coelomate. So they have a true coelom. That mesoderm is lining all parts of that body cavity. And this is, these two characteristics are what we've been seeing for a lot of our animal phyla. They do have complete digestion. Now, if you're looking at them, you're like, do they? I don't see anything. I see no mouth. I see no anus. Like, do they have any digestion? They definitely do. We'll explore it more on the next page, though. But they do have complete digestion, meaning they have a separate opening, one for the mouth, one for the anus. And because they have those two openings, that means we can designate them as either a protostome or a deuterostome. One of those openings had to form first. And of all the animal phyla we've talked about, this is our first group that is a deuterostome. So remember, deutero means second and stome referring to mouth. So the mouth is forming second or the anus is forming first. Same thing. So these are kind of our basic characteristics of Echinodermata. And let's explore something I think is cool about them. And it's how they move. 
So this is looking at a sea star, but all echinoderms move this way, and they move through something called a water vascular system. Now I'm going to pause. Before we even talk about this system, let's talk about movement of other things, like humans. When we go to move, I would show you walking, but you're not going to be able to see that. Um, when you move, it is contraction and oh God, uh, relaxing of your muscles, right? It's your muscles that help you move. It's, and it, as well as obviously your skeletal system is needed, your nervous system is needed, but for the most part, it's your muscles that are doing the work. And with a lot of organisms, it's the muscles doing the work. But echinoderms are like, nah, we're gonna do something different. They're like, let's use water. We're found in water, let's just use water. So <laughs> you have, a vascular system. Again, I keep using humans as an example because you're probably most familiar with humans. So vascular system is typically a series of tubes and canals and vessels that are moving stuff. In humans, it moves blood, it moves oxygen, it moves nutrients, it moves wastes. In echinoderms, they have a series of tubes similar to our vascular system, but it's water. And it's not just any water, it's it's the seawater. Like it's just water they're getting from their environment. And they're using that to move, which is crazy. So let's talk about that. So I'm gonna use this sea star as an example, but again, this applies to sea urchins, sand dollars, sea cucumbers, all of the organisms found in echinoderm. Now you'll notice on this particular picture, it has a lot of different words. I'm gonna really just highlight the ones in red. Those are really the ones I care most about. So first we will mention there is a separate mouth and anus on our sea stars and all of our echinoderms. And it's actually in the same general area on each of the different organisms. So the anus is actually right on top of the organism or the dorsal side. And it's usually incredibly small. You likely, even if you had a dried specimen, you likely may have a hard time actually finding it. They poop kind of like how fish poop, where it's like a really skinny little trail of stuff. So you likely wouldn't even see it. But that's found on the top side um, or the non-feeding side of the organism. Remember, with radially select symmetrical organisms, you usually have a top and a bottom side, a feeding and non-feeding side. So the anus is on the top. And then the mouth, it's labeled on here, but it's not pointing to anything because that's found underneath the sea star. So this is where a much larger opening is that you can definitely see on all of our different echinoderms. And it's gnarly, and one of the videos I'll have you guys watch shows you up close and personal a sea urchin mouth just chomping away at some kelp. So that's where the mouth and anus is. Let's talk about this water vascular system though. So the first thing that needs to happen is water needs to be taken in into the echinoderm. But here's the thing, like you could just have a hole that just like it sucks it in like a mouth or something, but there's stuff in the water. And if you're sucking in this water to travel through pretty small vessels in your body, it's really important that there isn't stuff in your water. So yes, the sea star sucks in water, but it goes through something called a sieve plate. And if you know what a sieve is, maybe if you went to the beach as a kid, you may have had like one of those little pans and you like shake it and you're like, oh, there's cool shells that come out. That's a sieve, like that's the official name of those tools. So a sieve plate does the same thing. It filters and sucks in water at the same time. And again, it's because you want clean water traveling through all your vessels. There is another name for this. I will use the term sieve plate. I'll keep using the word sieve plate, but you might hear it in one of the videos. You might see it on other diagrams. The madraporite. Again, I expect sieve plate. I'm going to use sieve plate. But in case you see this word, you're like, what are they talking about? The madraporite is another word for the same exact structure. So water gets sucked in to the sieve plate. All the other stuff kind of just stays on the outside. Then this water travels through something called the radial canal. So the water comes in 
And it's going to start going down these radial canals. Think of radial because, you know, it's like, I don't know, radial symmetry. Maybe that's where the name came from. I don't really know. In the case of a sea star, there's one radial canal going down every leg, right? The legs being used for movement. There's other sea stars that have 20 legs. There'll be 20 radial canals. So radial canal goes down each arm. So water is coming in through that sieve plate. It's going towards each of these radial canals. Then what happens is water fills these little tubes called the ampulla. So over here, this is a close up of here's our radial canal coming down with water and they're gonna fill up the ampulla. I'd like to think of ampulla as turkey basters. If you're familiar with a turkey baster, if I had one, I'd show you. I don't make enough turkey to have one. So it's a turkey baster has like a big bulb at one end of it. And then it's like kind of a long tube. You're supposed to use it to suck up turkey juices and then push that turkey juice back out over on the turkey. Get a nice, beautiful, yummy turkey. And Pula work nearly identically. Water comes down that radial canal, fills that ampulla, so the ampulla is now filled with water, and there are still muscles involved. However, what the muscles do is they push the ampulla, they squeeze the ampulla, so that the water comes out of them. Now, if you've ever used a pipette, like one of the plastic ones, or a turkey baster, when you push out the liquid in them, it comes out with some force. Not a lot, but some force. And so what's happening is as these ampulla gets squeezed and water gets pushed out of them, it's causing it to move forward. Those muscles are moving it in such a way that that momentum from squeezing out that liquid is being used in a forward motion. I shouldn't even say forward. It could be any motion. The sea star can move in any direction, but it takes work. All right, we talked about one of the downsides of radial symmetry is that it takes work to move, to coordinate a particular direction because there really is no forward or backward or side to side. It's, it's equal all the way around. Now there's hundreds, thousands of impula that these sea stars are coordinating in order to go in a single direction. And because that coordination is a lot, that's why they move slowly. But it's cool because they can move with equal ease in any direction. It's just configuring the direction of those ampullae. So although I'm using the sea star as an example, again, this is happening in all of our echinoderms. They all use a water vascular system in order to move. They all have the, aus <laughs> the anus and the mouth in similar, I guess, respective locations, whether it's the bottom side or the top side. And so I have two videos for you, and that actually is what ends um, this um, little <clears throat> overview of phylum echinodermata. So the first video that is going to pop up, I'm going to have it pop up right at the very end. The first video is taking a look at this water vascular system and how it works. It uses 3D models that kind of give you a better idea of how it looks and how it works. They might bring up other words, but it's only the ones that are um, squared off on this page that I care about. The second video is more of just a cool overview of a lot of different echinoderms. It shows you a sea urchin eating. It shows you different types of sea stars, uh, some brittle stars, which are really small and, and brittle, um, and then really large, like crazy, like 20 leg sea stars. So the second one is more just like a cool, I think it's like a Nat Geo, maybe um, uh, David Attenborough. I can't even remember if he's the one who does it, but I recommend looking at that one too. So this is where I end this video. I'm going to have two pop-ups come up with links to those two videos. Go and watch that. And thanks for learning about Phylum Echinodermata.